Hello everyone, welcome to another G-Vlog. Today I will be covering the module demonstration or tutorial on this GS G-Shock watch. The reference number for the one I'm holding now is GS300. It operates on 2301 module. So this be the one that I have with me. So if you have one of these in your collection or you're thinking about getting one of these at least you know what gonna expect for the function wise on this model for the review I already made another video talking whole all my thoughts and opinion in there and wrist jack size weight and all that go check the video out for this video we'll have a look into the engine over there and just have a look what is the function that this model have to offer to you guys Quick summary, this model is made to measure speed and also lap time. Basically, things that is related to stopwatch. That is the main purpose of this model and let's explain the sporty looking uh, watch face. And I noticed something that is neat as well about this model that is the minute hand actually reach all the way to the indexes which is a big deal over there. I mean most G-Shock or most watches in general even don't have a minute hand that is reach all the way up here. So that is a big thing, tiny bit but really uh, noticeable. Alright, let me zoom in a little bit to show you guys all the tiny writings in there to introduce it first before continuing with the watch setup and all. So we're looking at result, this will be the at the result mode for calculating in kilometer for the speed. Stopwatch number one will be up here, this guy will indeed have two stopwatch, stopwatch number two will be down here. And we have total on this side. Total over here stands for total lapse time. We're gonna look at that after this. This will be alarm or signal on. So lap reset. So we're gonna use this button and this button for lapse time. Uh, or, or even reset, start, stop, start, stop, and all that. At the home time, we're looking at day, date, and time over here. Let's uh, begin by setting up this piece. Let me zoom out a little bit for you guys to see all the button as well. Press it just up here and hold it for about 2 seconds. Now we can set up the seconds down here. Reset it to 0 if I want to do so. Press mode. I believe the time on this piece is already accurate enough for me. This will be the hours. This will be the minutes. And this will be the year. Let's set it up to 2017. This watch will max up to 2035 or 39. I can't recall. Oh, I missed one. 2017. And the day I'm filming this is... August the 24th, I believe. Yeah, 24th. Press mode and done setting up this watch. I believe you can set to 12 or 24 system as well after this. Press just finish setting up this piece. Press this button up here to switch between 12 hour or 24 hour system. Look at that. Look at that. The backlighting on this piece will light on EL green. For about 4 seconds, you cannot set the duration for this, but it is very, very hard to see. I believe because of the negative display on this, it's very, very dark. It looks better though in a dark room. Anyway, all the hands will glow as well if you are wondering. Okay, that's done on the watch setup. Let's have a look on the test screen real quick before I run through the function. The test screen to assess it using mode, adjust, and 24 hour system. Three button at the same time, so this will be the test screen. So whenever the result mode is on, so this thing will be on, stopwatch 1, stopwatch 2 or kilometer. So in this watch indeed could store, um, sorry, this watch could measure uh, uh, speed as well, which is interesting. Total time, stopwatch, alarm signal, no, very simple case. From home time, if I press this mode button down here, we're gonna go to uh, record time or log memory and such. But I didn't store any information yet in here, so nothing gonna appear. Basically, this will be the stopwatch and lap time and all. We'll get to that after. But let's go to the next one, which is dual time. In here, you can set off uh, other city code that you want. UTC time right now will be at 2.49. Let's set this thing up to 2.49. You can set this based on your preference, based on your country, or just like 10 minutes ahead from your local time. You, you can do this from here. So this is very uh, customizable based on your preference let's go to 249 done that's done on dual time that's pretty much it actually nothing much going on here it is basically similar as dual time press mode again we'll go to the alarm mode 
we're going to need to adjust this thing first so long with light on right there press the light button so that's pretty much it hours and also minutes and that's done you cannot set any specific date that you want the alarm to ring as well so keep that in mind finish setting up this alarm I can turn this alarm on or off including the signal using this 12 hour 24 hour button up here look at that both of them will on you can see that tiny indicator in there let me darken a little bit look at that right press mode we'll go to the next one which is the hand setting so the hand set over here will be useful whenever the time to display in here didn't match with the time display on analog in my case look at it it is currently 1051 but the time over here shows 245 so I don't really need to set this part press the adjust button up here and the time will stop blinking I believe I just need to press this button up here I only able to press this light button or lower right button down here and just hold it until we reach 2251 which is 1051 this part is pretty annoying I hope I didn't miss because I couldn't reverse process this is the only way I could do it just moving forward one way so very inconvenient so we're gonna be like every 20 seconds 53 already 52 53 and done Whew. very tiring though my fingers feel tired just pressing the button because it's pretty hard to press but we are done setting up this piece everything is now synchronized press this mode we'll go back to home time done on the basic function that this model have let me zoom out a little bit now let's go to the most important part about this piece which is the top watch mode press mode about two seconds we will enter this stopwatch mode so if you press mode again over here just one time you will be the, you will enter the double stopwatch or dual stopwatch how do you know that it's by looking at this dot over here so this part is similar as both of these so this is dual stopwatch and you can know that as well when this SD2 and SD1 take over their light on if I press this mode again it will light off so stopwatch number one so up here will be stopwatch down here will be total so this was total light on down there so let's start this thing up this will be the light button by the way so you cannot use this part in this mode just these two up here press this button on the upper right to start the stopwatch simple thing this is similar to most G-Shock up here will be 1 over 100 seconds this will be the seconds up here this will be the minutes down here will be the total time this will be the seconds this will be the minute and this will be in hour so if, if I press top right now look at that this two will go similar value because this is the second this will be the total time in seconds so as far as the stopwatch nothing gonna appear much but if I press start and if I split time using the adjust button up here then you can see the the use of the function of this total time up here let's say I split time lap number one lap number one start at nine seconds and the time at will keep running in the background it's already at seven seconds and it will store the total time from first lap and this will be a second lap now so total time between first lap and second lap are already at 25 seconds let's go to lap number two so lap number two will be stored in here this will be lap number three will start right away at six seconds already so total time will be at 36 seconds so let's stop this thing um, and sort of stop and if I just press adjust it will reset everything if I want to store the information I need to keep it running and press split time first and then press this button over here so that, that is the only way for me to store the information so let's do it again so reset go back to on time go back to this mode and there it is we already started uh, information just now so we're looking at 4.93 seconds total lap time at 4 seconds I believe this will be the second lap second lap will be at 8.26 seconds Total lapse time will be at 13 seconds already. Press this button up here. We'll go to the third information or the third lap. The third lap time will be at 4.88 seconds. And the total lapse time we are already at 28 seconds. Next, already back to one. So I already I just stored about one, two, three, uh, three informations only in here. So that is about the stopwatch. Very simple. 
I can reset both of these as well by pressing both of this button and clear reappear down setting or the store the stopwatch information press mode again we'll go to the uh, uh, dual stopwatch now we're looking at similar things again but instead of single stopwatch we're looking at two stopwatch so it's pretty confusing but it works similarly this button up here will operate this stopwatch this button up here will operate this this stopwatch so let's try this thing up press this just button up here the first stopwatch will start and since this watch is made to measure two moving objects at the same time just in case you miss press this one first and you forgot to press this button you can just press it right away and it will show the difference that you missed 10.87 seconds so you can record that and just add that back to this time over here at the first lap so it's pretty neat thing as well at the same time it will keep continue running at the background so even if you miss press this or this first you know how many seconds that you are off which is one over 100 seconds accuracy so you're gonna have a pretty accurate data so let's split time for this time up here so let time this uh, second car or this will be the first car this will be the second car so the first car already at first lap second car now receive at first lap so the, the difference between both of those time will be 9.21 seconds so you know that the first car is like 9.21 seconds faster than the second car pretty interesting calculation and at the same time as we are doing this each time I press that split time over there, the watch will store that information at their lock memory mode. Split time at the bottom here, split over here, the time will be 2.44 seconds and it will continue running or reset the background. And it already it will, it will show you at for about 4 seconds of course for the uh, elapsed time, look at that. 30.69, we will stop for about 4 seconds. For you guys to record the information if you want to do so then we'll keep continue okay down over here if i press any of this button and press and hold it it will reset everything to zero done okay let's have a look on information that we just stored just now this will be the first one so we're looking at 28.96 and 12.21 seconds second information will be uh, sec information number two and we're looking at second lap Inf information number three we're looking at two lap for the second car Question number four, first light for the second car, no light for the first car. And that's about it. So this will be the number for the information. On this side will be how many laps that regarding this number. And this will be the time for that second lap. 22.5, so zero. Over here as well, if I press, let's say, let's go to this first one. So we're looking at 26.96 and 12.27, right? If I press just over here, and we could add distance as well, which is neat. So 1.00, or I can use oh, all the way to 100 meter as well, which is very interesting. If you're watching a race that's just 100 meter distance, you can use this one to measure that as well, which is accurate enough. All right, let's uh, leave it at one kilometer. Let's just say the car that was racing this now, the track was about one kilometer only. Press adjust. So if I press over here, it will show the kilometer speed. So 133 kilometer per hour for the first car. 293 km per hour for the second car so if I go to the next uh, information up here let's say this information so if I press adjust it will show the uh, speed for the second lap second lap we're looking at 102 km per hour for the first car at second lap 262 km per hour for the second car I can press uh, this 10, 12, 12 hour system over here to go through the third information at third lap the first car somehow already stopped so I didn't measure any time at all and the second car still continue running so over here if, if I press adjust look at that nothing will appear for the first car so since the watch cannot measure the speed for the second car will 159 km per hour so that's pH over there so this will be the fourth information nothing for the first car again because I didn't uh, split or save information at that time so the second car will be about 47, so the speed will be about 76 km per hour. So in this watch, it will only measure in kilometer. So keep that in mind. Unlike latest list, we will measure in units, which you are able to convert it to uh, miles per hour and all. In this case, you need to manually convert it by yourself. Okay. And press this button and go we'll back to the first information. If I want to clear all this, just press this button. And we're back. And I guess that's all on this GSG Shock watch. Very interesting, almost like a calculator, but very high or quick pace. 
I mean, if you're into racing, you're probably already getting used to quick setting and all that. And you're probably gonna find this useful as well. I mean, it looks very sporty. You have the steel and resin. It is indeed titanium, very tough and long lasting. This watch fits very, very well to this particular feel. And if you watch my unboxing review video, you're gonna see that uh, this watch is in glossy. It is actually supposed to be a matte, which is now. Look at that, I already fixed, I uh, removed all the paint and make it fully matte finish. Now, this is way better. This is how it's supposed to look like at first. So I'm just gonna mention that as well, just in case you found something weird about that watch from the unboxing video, that's because the watch is glossy. It's, it didn't supposed to be glossy. It is supposed to be matte finish like this. So look at that. Use condition, but yeah, you can still see a few marks from paint removal and all, but I guess I already covered everything that you need to know on this GS G Shock watch, just this specific model. I hope you guys found this video useful, informative, and entertaining as well. For your future reference, leave a like if it does helping you, and also subscribe to see more contents like this in the future. Thank you very, very much for watching, guys. This is G Shock High Fashion Channel, and um.